will understand what is Nyquist sampling theorem. Okay, we have always heard, we always confront with the term Nyquist sampling theorem in communication engineering. So let us now try to understand the exact concept behind this. Let us first understand what this sampling theorem says. The sampling theorem says, suppose we have a signal x of t in time domain. The signal is x of t, and we want to sample it for other uh, further processing, further uh, digital processing, and all uh, things, all phenomenon. We need to sample the signal. A time domain signal is required to be sa uh, sampled. We, un uh, we understand. We already understand the meaning of sampling. Okay, that we have to take the discrete time values. Suppose we have got certain continuous time signal. We have to convert that continuous time signal into discrete time signal. So conversion of analog signal, analog continuous time signal into discrete time signal is called sampling. Sampling means we have to take the samples at certain time interval of time, not continuously over the time. Only at the discrete time instance we have to pick up the values. So that is called sampling. Now Nyquist says that how many samples per second we need to form or how many samples per second we need to pick up so that after all digital processing all data processing while recovering the original signal while recovering the original signal we will able to reconstruct the original continuous time signal so that has to be certain uh, minimum number of samples so that is given by Nyquist sampling theorem Nyquist sampling theorem that says that suppose it has got a certain uh, bandwidth of suppose beta hertz bandwidth of beta hertz okay it can be written as 2 pi beta radian per second also so it says that if this signal has got certain band limitation of beta hertz that is bandwidth of beta hertz it means sampling frequency or sampling rate also you can say sampling rate or sampling rate should be 2 beta samples per second we have to take 2 beta number of samples per second only at least at least 2 beta samples per second only so that while reconstruction while reconstructing the original signal we can recover the original analog continuous time signal so let us now see how these 2 beta number of samples are coming 2 beta number of samples per second see uh, roughly I will try to draw this uh, the time domain function of this suppose it is x I don't know what is the function x so it is some arbitrary function we can draw like this ok suppose time domain this is the spec this is the time domain functions uh, we can representation of this signal so it must have certain frequency spectrum it has got certain spec frequency spectrum so I've got one frequency spectrum frequency spectrum is nothing but actually the Fourier transform of this signal okay other can in other words can also say the this is the time domain representation of the signal and this is the frequency domain representation of the signal suppose x of t has its Fourier transform as capital X omega so it will be represented see if we have certain finite uh, function or some known function some some okay some known function then we can convert it mathematically but i don't know i am taking just certain example okay uncertain example so i'll try to draw the frequency spectrum we just have to concentrate on the spectrum how far it is going see for positive time we have got certain positive frequency spectrum that is 2 pi beta for negative time we have got certain negative time negative frequency spectrum that is minus 2 pi beta and this is of course in omega domain that is radian per second domain so up to here we have understood that suppose this is the time domain representation then this is the frequency domain this is not the exact uh, frequency domain but at least i want to tell you this this limit of frequencies that is the limit the spread up how far the frequencies are spread up so this is the values this may vary i don't know this values but this is just a rough idea of this time domain signal into frequency domain spectrum now we want to sample this time domain signal 
I want to sample. So necessarily to sample the signal, I want to multiply this signal with a, an impulse train. Impulse train. I have to multiply this by impulse train. So impulse train. Impulse train. See, you just use your mind. If you multiply these two kinds of signals, you will get some samples. Samples of this. And suppose the sampling duration is T S T S. This far, the distance between uh, uh, consecutive sam uh, consecuting impulses are T S T S T S. So I can say the sampling time is sampling duration. We can say sampling duration is equal to T S. This is basically a sampling signal is nothing but like this. K T S and this this K goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, right? If you put K is equal to zero, we'll get this. Like that, this is nothing but so now let us now understand the fact. If this is the time domain signal and this is impulse train and if we are multiplying in time domain then must be another impulse train which if this is if this signal is the frequency domain or you can say if this signal is the Fourier transform this signal and then if and if I am multiplying the two time domain signals then I must convolve two frequency domain signals where if this is if this is delta of delta t of t, this is impulse train, then this must be delta omega of omega, which is impulse train in frequency domain. So it's Fourier transform like this. This is also an impulse train, we already know. This is also an impulse train. This is also an impulse train, but the difference is that it has got it has got unity height that is unity amplitude it has got 1 by 2 pi amplitude if you convert it we'll get it and we get ts then this will get will get like okay 2 pi sorry 2 pi by ts 2 pi by ts 2 pi by ts we have got this much of this this span this much of span this much of span that is nothing but omega omega s this is sampling frequency 2 pi by ts and we have to convolve this, right? If you are multiplying these two signals, we have to convolve these two signals. If you are multiplying these two signals, we will convolve these two signals. This is the time domain counterpart. This is the frequency domain counterpart of this one only. And this is the time domain impulse strength. This is the frequency domain impulse strength. Okay, if you understand. See, here we will get like this. 1 by 2 pi delta of omega minus k omega s. So this is the okay this signal and this is the this signal this is the impulse train and time domain this is the impulse train in frequency domain so this has got we can say Fourier transform and this has also got Fourier transform relation this has also got Fourier transform relation so okay you are up to here we have understood okay now we are uh, multiplying this so we will get some more more or less signal like this just like I am trying to draw the discrete counterpart of this signal, okay? I am not exactly drawing it, I am just drawing some, okay, some more or less similar signal. So if you draw this, we will get like this. So this is nothing but this like, like this. So this has become, if you are multiplying these two signals, we are obtaining this signal. Similarly, if we, we are, if we are convolving these two signals, we will get some more, more or less signal like this. Like this, like this like like this okay so we'll get like this we'll get one central part also mm, okay yeah because we have got an impulse and we'll get this replica of this one at every point where i've got an impulse so i've got an impulse at the center we'll get a replica of this at the center i've got here so we'll get here again we'll get here we'll get here so i'm not no, i'm getting what I am just getting the convolution of convolution product of these two signals. So here it's nothing but zero. Here it's nothing but two pi by T S. Here is nothing but again two into two pi by T S. Okay, like this. And again the bandwidth will remain same. That is, the bandwidth will remain same. 
okay the bandwidth remains same that is nothing but 2 pi beta sorry this will get 2 pi uh, 2 pi beta minus 2 pi beta okay again here it will also similar so uh, let me uh, draw this part once again so that you will understand it better pi b minus 2 pi b okay up to here its distance of 2 pi ts and again we get okay same bandwidth here also we get same bandwidth okay 0 minus 2 pi by ts see here here it's nothing but again plus 2 pi b minus 2 pi b so this is what is nothing but our frequency equivalent spectrum or frequency equivalent representation of our sampled signal sampled signal in frequency domain in frequency domain sampled signal sampled signal in frequency domain c so if this minus 2 pi beta if this point and this point if overlap if this point and this point overlap okay if they will touch each other no problem no problem at all but if this part is going inside here if this part is going the problem will occur the problem will definitely occur so i want this point to be always greater than this point means this point should be always at the right side of this point because if they will collide if they will overlap or they will meet and they will uh, touch each other or cross each other then then while recovering some aliasing will hop happen and the filter will not able to detect whether my value is this to take or this to take they will be mingled up they will be mixed up so that's will this this point will cause aliasing if they cross each other basically cross each other if they will cross each other okay so in order to in order to avoid aliasing in order to avoid aliasing this point should be always at the right side means i can say in mathematical sense the value of this is what up to here it is 2 pi by ts so here up to it is 2 pi by ts minus 2 pi beta this point should be always greater than or equal to 2 pi beta see this point is 2 pi beta and this point is nothing but this point is nothing but 2 pi by ts 2 pi by ts minus 2 pi into beta see so here i see that 2 pi by ts should be greater than equal to 4 pi beta so 1 by ts should be always greater than equal to 2 pi 2 pi 2 pi cancel it will become 2 beta see and this is nothing but i can also write like 1 by ts can be written as fs which should be greater than 2 beta see initially i wrote what is beta beta is nothing but the bandwidth of in hertz this is in hertz bandwidth of our my original signal and fs or is nothing but the sampling frequency i told you 1 by ts ts is the sampling duration and sampling frequency or sampling rate i can say so it must be twice of this so this if you want try to understand then everything will be understood automatically and if you concentrate on this part what is happening okay so this is called what is sample nyquist sampling theorem nyquist sampling theorem told that the sampling frequency must be greater than or equal to my 2 beta that is twice of beta you can keep away and away however possible but at least it should not touch or at least it should not cross it so minimum uh, minimum condition to meet to avoid the aliasing uh, aliasing uh, condition is that you have to keep it equal or greater okay thank you i hope you understood the concept